Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Center and welcome back to my craft room. So today I'm really excited because for the first time I'm actually doing an embroidery video. So I am brand new, brand spanking new to embroidery. It's something that I've really wanted to try for a long time. My mom and my great grandmother have done needlepoint for my whole life. They have beautiful pieces they've done. I learned how to sew and how to do cross stitch and other uh, needle projects when I was a little girl, but I've always wanted to learn embroidery or needlepoint like my mom and my great grandmother, my Nana did. Um, and I've just never really tried it because always a little intimidated and not sure where to start. Um, but over the last couple years, I think it's become more and more popular. I keep seeing more videos on embroidery, on needlepoint, on all of these fabulous new stitches or old stitches or different ways to do thread painting. And every single time I see one, I'm like, I want to try that. But I keep seeing either videos of more advanced projects where you have to transfer your own pattern. Um, I'm sure that I can do that, but it's a little intimidating to start with. Or I'll find these kits. I found some beautiful ones a few weeks ago, but they were 40 or $50. And while the kits may be worth that price, I don't want to necessarily spend that kind of money on something I'm not sure if it's going to be a long-term hobby for me, that I'll like it or not like it. I tend to joke that I t am a uh, craft supply collector more than a crafter with some of these projects. I love to try new things and start new projects. I don't always love to finish them. <laughs> So I decided, um, mom and I were out shopping last week, we were at the craft store and I saw all of these beautiful embroidery kits for $5.99 and I said, you know what, that's the kind of budget I can get behind. So I picked up two, I'm going to show you both of them, and then last week I picked up a third, a larger project that I'm going to be starting on today because I finished the first two already. I'm definitely smitten. I'm really enjoying it as a way to um, shut my brain off and not look at some screens for a while before bed. I don't know that this will ever become a huge part of my channel, um, but I really would like to try some of those more advanced patterns that you can find online um, that you can transfer yourself, do more exciting projects. But for someone who's just starting out, I really liked these little kits. I thought for $6, they were a great value. They were really cute. And in about two weeks, you know, working in the evenings, I was able to complete two projects, which is a great uh, return on investment for lack of better words. They were easy to complete projects. Whereas stitching, it does take a long time for some of these bigger projects. I know people who stitch on larger projects for a year, two years, three, four years. So. I, this is not sponsored, I bought these myself with my own money from Hobby Lobby and Michael's, I bought from both places. Um, I just enjoyed them and I thought I would just share with y'all what I'm kind of working on and that these kits worked for me as a great way to learn a lot of different stitches. I picked two that had different stitches, that way I could learn different projects or different things to do. Um, and I used the more samplers, you know, I kind of played around with um, doing a long and short stitch in one way on this leaf and a slightly different way on this leaf to see what I liked. And then uh, hopefully when I do larger projects, I'll know what I like and I won't need to experiment as much because these are the kind of things you only know by learning. So we are going to jump in. All I'm going to be doing is showing you the two projects I've completed and how the kits come because when I opened my first kit, they do have instructions, but they are not as all encompassing as I would like. I definitely had to Google or YouTube or um, kind of piece that together because even on YouTube, when they had instructional videos, I did find some, um, they weren't all encompassing. They showed you a single stitch, not necessarily like this is the whole kit. This is how you start the kit. This is how you do it. So today I'm going to be showing you the two projects I did as well as we'll start our third project. And then I'll do a whole video just on going through the third kit because it's a more intermediate kind of project and show you all the stitches that it includes. That way, if you'd like to try this, it kind of helps you have a good 
foot in the door, so to say, before you head off on a larger adventure. I'm very excited. I actually picked up some just regular hoops and fabric um, yesterday to start some designs without all the instructions and some floss. So either way, I know I've been talking way too long, so let's get started at looking at these kits and how they turned out and leave a comment down below letting me know if you've tried one of these kits, if you've tried embroidery, and if you did, how did you learn? Did someone teach you? I'm really excited. My mom's going to teach me how to do needlepoint because it is slightly different um, with some of the patterns from my great grandma's book. Uh, but for embroidery, how did you learn? Do you like these little kits? Did I choose a good avenue or was there a better way to start? I don't know. I'm, I'm impressed. I think I did pretty good. Let's get started. All right, so let's get into these kits. When you buy a kit, you can see they have different ones. I picked up two to start with. They were both $5.99 and they come with everything you pretty much need to make an entire piece, including your uh, you know, cover of the picture, which is really helpful. This specific one includes an embroidery hoop, embroidery floss, a printed fabric piece, two needles, and instructions. And so for this piece here, you can see it came with this small hoop. I think it's a maybe a five inch hoop, a four inch hoop, it doesn't really matter. It also came with our instructions. So the instructions kind of walk you through the entire process, including all of your stitches and your color guide. So it shows you all of your colors. That's going to coordinate with your actual embroidery floss, which is tangled up. So these are all of the colors that we had. You can see they coordinate here and that there were 10 colors for this project then each part will tell you, you know, how many uh, pieces of floss. So each strand is going to be six strands and you'll separate out if you need six or if you need one or if you need two or three and it will tell you which stitch to use. Then on the back here is where it shows all the stitches. I really liked these kits specifically because they only had you know, like it was very easy to tell this is the dark pink, this is the middle pink, this is the light pink, this is the dark blue. There was only so many colors that it was very easy to tell which color went where. So I actually did this piece first and it's on an organza, which was a little harder to work with. I was fine, but in a normal embroidery project, you can kind of just go wherever you want with the back of your piece and not have to worry about it. Whereas with the organza, if I simply took my floss from here up to this flower, you would see that crossing over behind the fabric. Now, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these yet. You can finish them off, leave them on the hoop. You can take them off and, you know, finish them in other ways, make them appliques or patches or uh, my mom likes to make little sachets as she calls them. She puts potpourri in them because she's that kind of mom, I guess. Um, but I really liked them for learning embroidery and I thought they were a really good value as opposed to all the ones I was seeing on Facebook or online ads that were $30, $40 for a kit, which the value might be there in that. They probably are better patterns, better quality materials. But if you're just getting into a project or a hobby like I am, you don't necessarily want to spend $40 to see, do you even like embroidery? Now, I've been sewing, like I said, since I was like five. So I already knew I liked sewing this kind of world. Um, my mom's been doing needlepoint. I knew, I knew I would probably like this, but I still wanted to try. Now, if I was picking one for my very first project at this point, after doing both of them, this project had more colors and more stitches. It was a harder project, but the fabric was easier. Now, Leisure Arts, I picked these up at Hobby Lobby. This is not sponsored. I paid for these. Um, they had lots of patterns and lots of materials. So I would probably look for one on this printed fabric that was a fairly simple design. I picked this one for its simplicity 
but the organza was harder to work with. So outside of the actual kits, um, you will need a pair of embroidery scissors. You can get really fancy ones. I just picked these up. They were $2 and they're very sharp. You need something that's going to cut your floss really easily without maybe accidentally cutting into the back of your project. So I grabbed these. I also have just from sewing a little uh, needle threader. It makes actually threading your floss onto your needle much easier. I have this little guy, he's magnetic, and he is a needle holder. So what you do is you put him anywhere on the front of your project, you got the little magnet, he holds your needle. That way when you're, you know, sometimes I'll bring this over like to my mom's house in the evening if we're watching a TV show, and it just keeps your needle from getting lost when you're traveling. It is completely extra. They come in all kinds of different patterns, shapes, colors. I just, I have a couple. I like this little bird because he's tiny. I have a few others that are bigger, which if you're sewing a big project, that might be fine. But I liked this little guy for these little hoops. And then this is completely extra. You do not need this. But I found as I was doing especially the French knots that called for six strands. Um, I have, surprise, arthritis in my wrists, and I injured this finger actually last week. If you saw that video, weeding, I got a really bad ant bite and I had to go to the ER. And so my finger strength is just not there. I was really struggling pulling those French knots through. And so I grabbed a pair of my jewelry pliers to pull the needle through and it made a huge difference. If you do are somebody who struggles with hand strength like I am, that might be um, something that helps you. So I've been keeping all of this in my little bag. So I'm going to go ahead, put these away. Well, not away, I'm gonna put them up here. I'm really excited to actually start trying things that aren't kits. There's so many patterns online that you can purchase or free patterns that look really exciting that I wanna try. But these kits were really fun, like beginning entryway into embroidery. And I really enjoyed not having to think about it. Just they've got the kit set up and you just do what they tell you. So I actually just picked this up. I wanted a bigger kit kind of hoop. And I liked that this piece has a lot of florals, but there's still lots of space. Looking online, there are a lot of tutorials on really pretty stitches on just little samplers in a row that then you can incorporate into larger designs. And I've seen several that I want to learn with stitches for like hollyhocks or foxgloves, these kind of loopy larger stitches. And I was thinking when I saw this, like I could easily make this into one of the hollyhock stitches that I saw. Um, you know, I could even add a few more flowers in here. So I picked this up to do as a base for some stitches that I want to learn. So I'm going to show you from the beginning what a kit looks like. Now this is loops and thread where the other kits that I picked up were leisure arts, but doing some Googling, I believe they are actually the same brand um, because I couldn't find anything on loops and threads. But when I searched leisure arts kits, I found this exact same kit. Again, this is not sponsored. I picked this up at uh, Hobby Lobby and I picked this up at Michael's. So take all that with a grain of salt. But I think they are the same. There were several patterns like this at Michael's where they had older kits behind with the exact same photos. And I believe they had this blue top to them. So I think they're, I think they just have changed their name to Leisure Arts. But this is what you get when you open a kit. So this piece has our larger design on the front. I wish it was bigger, but it's about the same size as the smaller pieces. We get our instructions and it's going to tell us all the same steps as before. You know, center your printed fabric on your hoops. Look at your color key and stitch guide to determine what floss color and stitch you need to use. 
it's reminding you here that your floss is always going to come in six strands. You'll need to separate those out depending on how many strands you need. And then do your stitches according to the stitch guide. So this one I also picked up because it has the turkey loop stitch. It has a few other um, floofier flowers. This one here is turkey, turkey loop and these are turkey loop. And I wanted to try those. So that is another recommendation when you are learning how to do embroidery. Pick kits that have things you don't know yet. They're, it's a really fun, easy, safe way to learn. So then we have our stitch guide. It has everything all stitched laid out according to how many strands you need, how many colors. I would pick one of these smaller kits to get started with because it's very easy to see here. This is green, this is pink, this is blue. There's not a lot of color overlap. Whereas in this one, you can see I'm supposed to use three different colors for each of these turkey loops. I'm supposed to use different colors for each of these leaves and they're very similar colors. We've got a whole list of colors here. So that's not a problem, but it is more intense, more confusing. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call this a beginner project, whereas the other ones are more beginner. So either way, getting into it, we've got our floss cards. And these are supposed to be organized in order of the color guide here. So it says, no, floss is on card in this order. So you can see white is actually a dark blue, but there's our white floss blue, lavender, dark lavender, taupe, light seafoam, seafoam, and green. So that matches up with the colors they've given us. We do have a second card here because we have a lot more colors and there's our needle. Then we have our fabric. So the printed fabric comes right like this. You can see your design is printed out for you and it's just going to be an outline. So we don't even really have like this little swoosh behind this guy isn't necessarily printed there. That's okay. It's going to give you the basic outline. These smaller ones, every single outline is there. You follow the guide exactly. But once you start getting into these more complex designs, they're going to give you a general guide, but it's more guidelines than laws. Think Pirates of the Caribbean. So we have two hoops so that we can do this fun kind of inner hoop cut out. I'm not 100% convinced I'm going to do that. Like I said, I really want to use this as a base for more flowers. So I may actually um, not use the smaller hoop. I may continue to do some more flower work in here. Actually, it looks like I need a slightly bigger hoop for this. I found that out with these two. As you can see, this one fits great in this hoop and it looks beautiful. This one goes right up to the edges. If I was displaying this in this hoop, I would really want the next size up. So either way, we're going to go ahead and stretch this over this. I may grab a bigger hoop to actually use this design. But to put a design on a hoop, you're going to try to center it. Whoops. On that back hoop and loosen your screw. I fit this over the top here. Now we can move it about. Make sure it's centered. There we go, that's pretty good. Once it's centered, go ahead and push it down. Now tighten your, your hoop up just a smidge. And then we're gonna go around and we're gonna pull the fabric so it's wrinkle free, taut, I want it to be pretty, 
pretty tight to do your stitching, but it doesn't necessarily have to be like tight, tight, tight. And go ahead and tighten it up. There we go. All right, so now we are going to start our stitching. There is no, you know, first stitch. There's nothing that says start here. You're just gonna pick a spot and work your way around. So these little, little guys are satin stitch, which means we're basically just going to go one side to the other with our floss. I think I'm gonna start on those. We'll work our way around doing all of the flowers. I'm definitely going to stitch this in a separate video so that I can take my time. I will probably do like one piece of each stitch. So this is satin stitch. I won't probably stitch all of them. I'll stitch one, show you each of the stitches and how to know which thread goes where. I'm not an expert at all, obviously. Like these are my first pieces I've ever done. But even with the smaller pieces, it did take a bit of learning. And so I just want to kind of try to help yep leisure arts it says it right at the top exactly sorry i just saw that so loops and threads leisure arts it's definitely the mother company or the company that has bought loops and thread they're connected in some way so um either way back to what i was saying i will show you over there all of the stitches and then we'll decide which stitches to add but it is going to take quite a while to do this piece. It probably took about two weeks to do both of these. It's definitely faster as you learn, but you know, still on the bus here. So I don't want y'all to have to wait a whole week, two weeks to uh, see the finished product in this video. So if you wanna check out what this ends up looking like, head over to that video. I will link it as soon as it's finished. In the meantime, let me know down below if you like embroidery and if you do, um, how you learned. Have you tried one of these kits? Do you recommend them? Do you recommend a different way? Um, I'm really excited after this to try some patterns that I found online that I want to put on my own fabric as well as my mom has a book from my great grandmother with patterns that include the stitches and floss that you should use for them. And I really want to do some of the designs from her book because that's just a little special to me. So yeah, either way, let me know down below if you liked this video and what you want to see in the future. I am really excited for those patterns I've found online. I know a lot of people use uh, tracing paper to put their design on their fabric. I've done that in the past for other projects. Um, but now that I have my Cricut, it would be just as easy for these smaller hoop projects to just load that fabric right in my Cricut and have it draw the pattern right on my fabric in a minute, as opposed to me spending all day tracing this design with carbon paper. So if you'd like to see that process, let me know. I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.